So we're going to size the control rod right now by having the top of the U be in the center of the splines for the servo that we've attached and it's going to go straight back and we want it to be we were going to put a 90 degree bend right at the top right at the hinge joint that we just created in the middle of that crevasse that we have that little V that's cut in that is going to be the other side of it and you just eyeball it I don't get too worried about making that exactly right there it is right there put in my my uh, pliers and put in another 90 degree bend um, like this Oops. so we're looking at 90 degrees right there and uh, and this all needs to sort of be in the plane of the um, of this U and this actually the, the the adjustment link does not need to be in the same plane but this U does so you can just twist it a little bit it's not the end of the world just make sure everything looks like it's nice and aligned so that this is this is in the same orientation as this and clean it up a little bit you can bend it's fine and then we essentially have the length of our control rod right now all right and then I'll trim it now we're going to make the um, Elvon control horn this came from the inside of your deck when you cut it out so we pull that out and we are um, essentially going to be putting the control rod through this and then attaching this to the Elvon. Um, I want to take it so that I am cutting away um, anything that doesn't, it's not right on top of the flute edge. Um, I might even whittle it a little bit so that that's a nice tight edge there. I don't want a lot of overlap because that'll just interfere with the, the control rod. And I'll pick like one, two, three, four, I don't know, one, two, three, four. Uh, we'll do five on this one and and just cut on the other side as well. So what we have essentially is a bunch of these end on um, flutes and this is uh, two and a half inches so I'm going to cut it in half just eyeballing this is not a crucial dimension like this and now we have two of them and we now create a hinge point by taking this um, and we're just going to push it through and if this is a little too square if it looks like it's not going to go through easily you can put a little bit of an angle cut on it uh, maybe I'll try to do that a little bit so that's got a little bit of, sort of a drill bit like quality and I'm just going to go through about um, I don't know, about a sixteenth of an inch back and just get it through parallel through all of these levels all these layers of coroplast and see how I'm doing it. So now I have a really nice hinged joint. And what we're going to do is we're now just going to attach this to the Elvon, and we have a control horn that's really strong and really easy to build. So uh, let's see. Actually, we're going to rotate that the other way. Good. So now what we do is we get ourselves a little punch through thing. So I'll just use the remaining core plastic that I have from the middle, just sort of to take those hits. I've got my adjustment here that I've done. And where I want to put this is um, ideally the hinge point should be over the hinge. This, the, this rod should parallel the hinge um, in an ideal world. It doesn't need to be perfect, but that's where I like to have them. And so I need to eyeball that a little bit. It should pretty much line up with what I've done here. If it's not perfect, we'll fix it later with some adjustments. That looks pretty good. And then I will, using our standard technique of zip ties, zip tie that guy up. And there you have it. That is a nice control horn. Now there's a little binding now because I really did put this over the hinge so I might need to hollow out a little bit of foam here so that I don't get a bind, some binding action from that being there. So I will just go and whittle away a little bit. And now I have what is enough control freedom. That is plenty of control freedom and we have a really nice strong control horn on that Elvon. So now we're going to make um, our stabilizers, um, which are essential for the stable strike of the um, towel. Um, we're just going to use a, a template 
um, you have the dimensions on the on the plans from the website or we drew them on your um, phone that we sent you. Um, I'm just going to use the template to do this directly because that's the quickest way. But before you do it, um, a good thing to do is just is to um, take some tape and put it on both sides of the blue foam. which has the effect of reinforcing um, the weakest part of the rudders in their typical failure point, which are the little slot tabs that go in. Then we just go and we cut. The uh, actual shape of these stabilizers is not that crucial. You just want some surface area up after the CG. You can actually fly these with, with just one stabilizer. We put on two because we think it looks good. Um, I think it flies a little better that way, but you can do different shapes. You can do round, you can do jagged, it doesn't much matter. We have all kinds of different shape stabilizers. And notice how we have tape now reinforcing these two tabs. Now we're going to cut in the slots, and this is a classic case of, well, just give yourself enough room to get it done. So um, this is going to slide back about half an inch from the slot, so you want to have it at least a half inch in ahead of the trailing edge. So what I do is I mark fore and aft, fore and aft. Another good thing to do is just have it right at the break of the, um, of the deck as it attaches. So I now know that this is the, uh, that'll be the position and the length. And then I go through and I cut all the way on both sides. Try to get it all the way through. And the other side, actually, what I do is make it as wide as this, maybe even a little narrower, but I eyeball it. It's a quarter inch. And this. If you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. You can always add more tape or there's other ways to get them to attach. And you just punch it through. And then the rudder attaches like that pushes through, and you slide it back, Oops. and back. And we have ourselves a nicely attached rudder. They'll flop back and forth. It's not a problem. And notice also that the stabilizer now is also keeping this um, uh, control rod from sliding out, it's so physically blocking the ability of this thing to slide away, which is a nice way to have it. I've had it other ways. Um, it doesn't really matter. They, they don't tend to slide out anyway. All right, so we have attached the stabilizers and the control rods and the Elvon um, control surfaces. So all that's left is you attach the prop saver and the prop. Make sure that the motor turns clockwise as you're looking at it from pilot view and that the um, writing on the prop is towards the front. You should generate a lot of thrust. If you don't feel some big surge of thrust, you might have things backwards. Um, then we will you will just attach the um, control horns from the servos to the control rods here, finish out this side, attach the other stabilizer, and you should be ready to fly. Um, the default trim, just to reiterate, is going to be um, a few degrees up or without the stabilizer. It's easier to get the trim um, set in. You want to have about a width worth of coroplast on neutral trim there. So that's going to be just kicked up just a tiny bit. And the uh, center of gravity is going to be right on the cutout but underneath the motor mount or a little bit ahead of that, particularly if you're a beginner. Um, send us videos of you flying your planes. We'd love to see them.